What's up, YouTube? This is Miles B. I'm here with another message. Hopefully everyone is doing well. It's been a while since I've talked to you all. Um, I just wanted to just share some things that God has placed on my heart about um, staying on the path, making sure that you, you press towards the prize of the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus and being aware of temptations that can try to distract you, that can try to take you away from what God has called you to be. So this morning I went up, I did a, my early morning run and I got out the word, I did some prayer and I just wanted to, to go over what God was impressing upon me for, for those who were here that we need to stay in alignment with his purposes. Hold fast to the faith that God has called us to. Make sure that we are seeking him daily and keeping, keeping in step with the faith that is in Christ Jesus and him alone. The churches serve a purpose. They serve a purpose of gathering. They serve a purpose of people gathering to worship God. But gone are the days when you can rely completely on the church to give you everything that you need. And it's not to downplay the church. It's not to, to take away from the church. But there are there is a working that God wants you to do of yourself where you work out your own salvation with much fear and much trembling because it is God who works in you to will and to do according to his good pleasure. And so if God has pressed something upon you to do, it is your responsibility to do it. If you see something that's going on in the church that you don't like, or you think that there's things that should be happening in the church that are not happening, guess what? You are the church. So you become what you think should be happening. If you need to see more people given to the homeless or the poor, you become the person that gives to the homeless and the poor. If you need to see more parental involvement with the children, you become that parent that is involved with your children and making sure that they are who they're supposed to be in Christ. I just want to help each person to know that your influence, your impact is more than what you perceive. It's more than what, than what you think of yourself. Your value and your impact of what you contribute is so much more than how you view yourself. In the Bible, it talks about how at a time when Saul was little in his own eyes, he was anointed as king. He was anointed as a king when he viewed himself as a, a small person. I want you all to know that you all are royalty and you're viewing yourself as small in your own eyes. Now, this is a great thing when it comes to avoiding pride. But recognizing the reality of the authority that you carry as royalty, as co-heirs and joint heirs with Christ Jesus, gives us a confidence, not in ourselves, not in our own flesh, but in the faith of Jesus Christ and the foundation in Jesus Christ, so that you can complete your assignment with boldness because you cannot be cowardly and you cannot have fear. And if you do have fear, then there's another word that kicks in where God makes you brave to face your fears or to do whatever it is while you're afraid. You become courageous. You have courage and bravery. And this is how you overcome your fears by stepping out to do them, even though your feelings might 
give you a moment of discomfort and anxiety. So God really wants you all to make sure that you are, you're working out your salvation. Because I know you all are. I know you all are. I know you, I know you, I know that you're doing that. And I know that you're seeking my face. And I know that you're, you're striving to do my will. And I want you to step out in boldness. I want you to step out in faith with what you know you're supposed to do. You have an assignment in our time is not unlimited while we're here on this earth. So write that book, speak to that person, invite them to church, do that ministry God has called you to do, and be the light in the world that God has called us to be so that we can glorify our Father in heaven. It's a word that God put on my heart. I hope for whoever this is for, it's definitely for me. I'm speaking and I'm listening to myself as I speak. I hope that God continues to bless you, that God continues to keep you, that God continues to sanctify you, that God continues to set you apart, that God continues to, to raise up in his, his, his spirit a boldness and a love for his people, a love for his word, a love for who he is. God is so good. God is so great. He's beyond our imagination. His throne endures forever. His face is like no other. His glory is unsurpassed. He is the highest of the high. He is surrounded about with cherubim and angels that sing songs that are indescribable and they scream out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. We will be numbered with the saints and the redeemed and we will see his face. We will see the son of God and all his majesty. We will see the king of kings in all his majesty. And we are washed in his blood because we believe in the work of the son of God. Our time here is a divine time. Our time here is a time that is, it's purposeful and Everything that you do, every time I get on here, I feel how it's like it's throwing a spiritual rock into the pond and it creates a ripple. And I understand how the moment you just you just get in alignment. It's right on time. Somebody's going to listen to this and be like, man, this is exactly what I need to hear. You get right in alignment. And guess what happens when you do it? You get right in alignment. And I just want to thank God for each and every person who, 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 has, who has stuck with this channel, who, who visits this channel, and all the new people who come to this channel. Because there is a scripture that says, many are the afflic afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. And listen to me, listen to me. I know you have, I know the world has, but we have gone through some affliction over here. And I thank God that he does deliver us through them all. When I say he delivers us through them all, I mean, he delivers us. We go through it. We climb through it. He miraculously removes it. Whatever it takes, we go and we are delivered through them all. If you have been afflicted, if you have gone through some type of grief, some type of trial, some type of 
pain, some type of fight, some type of battle, some type of maybe you've fallen, whatever it is, God will deliver you out of them all. To all those, because let's be real, to all those who are struggling with a sin, to all those who have, who has backslidden, God has a word for you. There is an advocate with the Father, and his name is Jesus Christ. There's an advocate with the Father, and his name is Jesus Christ. If any man sins, we have an advocate with the Father, and his name is Jesus Christ. Go to him. Don't run away from him. You go to him. You go to the Lord Jesus Christ who loves your soul. And you know, it's funny. Jesus in the word, you would hear about life. You would hear about how he encounters people. And man, when he would encounter them, he would hear it. And I feel like to all of you who have fallen, or maybe you're struggling or you're, you're climbing out of an addictive behavior or a pattern of sin, go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. Jesus, he would forgive the person. You're forgiven. Now go. He would say it like with power. Go and sin no more more. And then he would give you the warning, lest something worse come upon you. I don't want to see something worse to happen to you. Go and sin no more. So I think for all of us, for all of us, make sure that you continue to seek God, stay in his will, stay in his purpose, Stay faithful. If you have any iniquities, if you have any sins, let the Lord Jesus Christ wash you, make you clean, and go and sin no more. Repent. Turn back to God. Jesus Christ loves our souls dearly. There's nothing, there's nothing greater in the world than the love of Jesus Christ. You're hearing about people that have had everything. They have everything. And what they've done is waxed worse in their sinful behavior in secret and everything in secret being brought to light. And when it's brought to light, it's exposed. And then you see how evil it truly is. God has also been giving me visions or specific dreams that are so potent about technology. I want you guys to, to know that technology is alive, okay? I don't know how else to express it except that the way that it functions is like it's alive. And I've had dreams to where you can hold your phone just like the way that I'm holding my phone and the phone can take multiple pictures from angles like this going up all around panoramic while you hold the phone straight because it scanned the entire room and is able to take pictures doing that. I've had moments of just where I've seen the technology do things that aligns with what my thoughts were. Thinking about something and then it comes up on the television where it might be catching your, your brain waves. I've had the activation of my notifications once my voice or I make a sound and then all of a sudden notifications are happening. 
And the same way that you can say, you know, you can call out that name and that name will respond back to you when you ask it a question, because I don't want to say it and disrupt my video, but you'll say, hey, whatever. And then that person, that girl, she will respond from the Apple phone or the other phone that you have. It can also hear when you're when you're talking, it can hear when you make sounds and then all of a sudden the notifications start triggering. Now, this isn't something that's necessarily announced, but I noticed that I wake up and then I'll say something to my wife and then all of a sudden notifications are popping up. And I said, I wonder, is this voice activated to start sending no, uh, notifications to you after you've been asleep and it hears you? even though you have not initiated that. Or um, I've seen, you know, I've seen the television to where the television does like a lighting when I don't think it was supposed to be doing that or it knew that I was looking at it. Now, you guys are wondering, like, what does this have to do with like the scriptures or what does this have to do with God? I believe that these... These are also tools to influence you and to potentially distract you depending on how you use it. So be mindful of how you entertain technology. Be mindful of, of you know, we say, you know, being on YouTube and TikTok. There are, I believe, spirits that will try to send pop-ups onto your devices to try to derail you while you are in the midst of a focused study or while you're just on there. It's almost like walking through a forest, a digital forest, and something pops up and it shocks you. So you have to be mindful and put parameters on what you're doing because lots of people fall prey and there's lots of studying that goes into the marketing for this too fall prey to advertisements that you had not intended on doing. The same way you can go with a temptation. You might not have even been thinking about uh, whatever pops up, because I don't want to say it. But whatever it is, it, it can pop up and it can truly disrupt you for a moment or plant a seed. And you have to ask God, if anything has, has, has entered into my heart that is a, not a good seed, I pray that you uproot the seed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And so I just want to, I want to, I'm really going off the top right now, but it's been a while. So I just wanted to just, just share some things and, 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 and let you all know how much, how much I care about you all, how much I love you all, how much I want all of us to grow and do everything that God has called us to do. So when we see him, not only do we get to heaven, but that he is, he gives us a, a well done and that we have exceeding great and precious rewards in Christ Jesus, because we did what we were supposed to do and that we will not be ashamed and be saved, that we will not be like, oh, I should have done this. Oh, I could have done that. Oh, I could have done this. Oh, I wish I did that without the pain of regret. The pain of regret is just, it's, it's, it's beyond. And so I don't want to regret anything. And I want to, I want to encourage each and every person to live life without regret. I find that I'm the happiest when I've done everything that I know that I'm supposed to do. When I wake up and I know I'm supposed to pray and I go pray when I have homework that I'm supposed to study and I go study, when I know I need to go work out and I go work out, when I know I need to eat this good food and I go eat that good food, when I know I need to spend some time with my kids and I spend time with my kids, when I know I need to go to sleep at this time, so I prep myself to go to sleep at this time and so I do it. I find that there's a joy when you do the things that you know you're supposed to do. And what happens is it opens up the, the door for more wisdom to come in when you start obeying the voice of wisdom. Now, I pray to you who, who does not have wisdom. I pray that God will give you the mind and the seed to desire wisdom. 
And that when you start to desire wisdom, that you can start to, to discern and hear the voice of wisdom. The voice of wisdom aligns with what you should do. What you should do according to God's will. What you should do in life. I believe it's God's will for you to have good rest. So it's not wisdom to stay up late. I believe God for, desires for you to have to have a full, long life. And a full, long life purposeful that is full of the Lord's work and his and his will and it's fruitful and it bears much fruit and even if it's challenged to be cut short that you still desire the will of the Lord above your life you esteem God's will above your life because when you give your life to God you find it when you say I will sacrifice my life for God God will help you find your life. Some of us, we, we res, you know, you can resist. And the, the first thing that lets go of resistance is surrender. And the, and the thing that makes you surrender is prayer. Prayer. First thing in the morning. It is good to pray early in the morning. It is good to wake up. Even if you, you know, you're in your car and I, I'm talking, I'm talking a lot, y'all. So if you need to break it up, that's fine. If not, amen. If you're in your car and you're driving and you, and, you, and you're listening to this, Father, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify you for what you've done for us thus far. You've been so good to us. God, please help us. Help us, Lord, because we need you. We need you, God, more than ever before for this new season, this new day, this new grace. Help us to do everything you've called us to do. Help us to speak your word and truth. Help us to be the light that you've called us to be. Help us to walk in true victory. Lord, we thank you. We praise you and I pray for our children. I pray, God, that your spirit would touch them and that your Holy Spirit will send angels, messengers to speak in their language. I pray that we also have that language to speak to them and that they would grow in wisdom and truth as well. Help us to be the example so that they can know when they look back on their life, mom and dad loved me. And they loved God. And I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I hope that this message touches your soul and that, that you gain some, some inspiration and that you get some boldness and some courage and that you continue to pray for me because we're going to make it. Make no mistake. Make no mistake, we're going to make it, but we want to make it in glorious fashion. We want to make it, and I'm not talking about with like fame. I'm talking about with, with being known by God and satisfied in your own conscience. So when you look in that mirror, you say, you did good, Miles. You did really good today. You did good over your life. And I look back over my life and I have memories of the things and the works of God that set us apart. So that you know that your life means, it means, it means I have faith in Jesus. This man believed in Jesus. This man was a devotee of Jesus. This man loved God. This man loved people. He loved God, and he wanted people to meet Jesus. And that's what I want my life to mean. So I love y'all. May the Lord continue to bless you and keep you in the mighty name of Jesus. Peace.